jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour. You can reach it, Teddy uh, at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today. We better, man. It's not a slow day in the market, that's for sure. I was talking to my man no, Kevin Hinks uh, this morning. I said we live in interesting times, man, and today an interesting day for sure uh, mm -hmm. with everything going on. So from a Forex perspective, Teddy, which I know is how you look at things usually first and foremost as you digest everything, uh, what do you look at on a day like today in the Forex market if we can start things off that we're you know waiting for Chairman Powell at 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. press conference at 2.30. Um, as a Forex trader, what do you look at that might be moving, especially on that type of, of news-driven event, potentially? Well, until the meeting is over, I think you're going to see a very dead day in most of the currencies, especially the euro, the pound, the Swiss. I think they're going nowhere until after the meeting. Now, you might see the U.S. dollar Canada because it's breaching some key resistance right now. That trend, the, motive, the momentum is there. I think there might still see a lift in that that may continue to trend through the day. Um, yeah. Probably because oil is pretty stable right now, you know. So, And they're waiting for the interest rate moves, which right now is odds are they're going up, you know. So yes. um, not that they're going to pull the trigger, you know, today, but that's going to be an issue. So those are the only – the, the Canada, U.S. dollar Canada and also the U.S. dollar yen is looking like it wants to break out to the upside also today. Those are the only two I think you're going to see any action until the 115, well, Chicago time or 215 your time. You know, once that happens. Yeah. Now, here's here's the thing is, especially like you look at the euro and the pound are not too far away from their lows. They look like they want to rally. But this is the kind of day where the algos are going to kick up. You know, you're going to have a lot of noise coming out regardless of what they say. Like the odds of them pulling the trigger are probably very slim. I don't think that's going to happen today, you know, so especially because they yes. have to digest the PPI data from yesterday they had a, or from the other day and also the CPI data. You know, these numbers are getting really scary, Tommy. Yeah, I'm not sure if you heard me say, man, I was saying the same thing, saying it's really remarkable that. The mm -hmm. conversation is just how quickly we're going to slow asset purchases. And, you know, the Fed's not going to freak out the market, folks. I'm not here saying that they're just going to end all this stuff. But it is remarkable, Teddy, that you get a CPI at almost 7 percent. You get a PPI at almost 10 percent. And the mm -hmm. Fed is still actively buying a, a, an almost incomprehensible 60, 70, 60 billion dollars every single month. Um, right. It's a staggering level of stimulus still going on with those numbers so i agree man i agree mm -hmm. uh and let's see if we could because i was pulled it up the k the the mm -hmm. u.s dollar canada um that has it looks like that was almost the biggest mover that we've had in the last week teddy so what is driving Absolutely. the u.s dollar canada is that the oil trade going on there um no i think that's actually the interest rate trade that's driving it right now so okay. the oil trade is pretty stable but the, right now, the whole world's looking at the, the, the 30 year and the 10 year to continue to trend lower, you know? And right now, they've been kind okay. of consolidating. And I think it's because of they were waiting for the big inflation numbers and also because they're waiting on the Fed. We're done for the year now when it comes to most of the numbers and especially with the Fed. So, what's going to be the outlook for 2022? Now, we've been already talking about this kind of trend already for months. Now, the Fed is finally admitting to the fact that, guess what? 2022 is going to be a year of inflation. There's no way you can look around it, you know. So there's no way the brakes are coming down on inflation for at least the next six to 12 months, you know. And that's a very severe environment for the Fed to deal with, you know. I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to be in the first time now where we, we have a lot of first time things going on right now in the, in the business sectors, you know. So and I think that it's going to be very shaky, especially when it comes to the interest rate play where we know rates are going higher. So what's that going to do to the value of the dollar, you know? So like, there's all kinds of scenarios where even if we get our supply chains to kick back up into gear and we smooth those things out over the next six months, what happens if there's a radical either decline or rally in the dollar over the next, say, three months? You know, how does that play into inflation as well? You know, so, I mean, there's certain uh, ways in which the dollar strength or weakness may come into play and help us as far as either our exports or our imports, depending on where you're going to and from, you know. But I, I don't know how that's going to get mitigated in a smooth fashion next year. Honestly, I, I can't even begin to see how that could happen.
Yeah, there's so many things in play, man. And even, you know, if you look at the best case scenario almost, which is the estimates at this point in terms of talking about inflation, mm -hmm. I think they go out and you eventually get to the beginning of 2023 that you're talking about maybe two and a half percent CPI or something like that, which the Fed would totally be cool with probably as you're just over mm -hmm. the number they're looking for. Um, but that's a year out, more than a year out. Right. And right. that's kind of like, a, in my opinion, a best case scenario, because as you stated, it's not going to go from 7%. We're seeing the numbers to 2.5%, mm -hmm. uh, even on a quarterly basis. That would be very, very mm -hmm. difficult with everything in flux. But in my own head, that's the estimate right now for mm -hmm. the, the beginning of 2023. But I go back to so many economists getting it so wrong in 2021. Mm -hmm. The inflation numbers they were looking for were nothing like what we're seeing right now. So those are the same people putting out the estimates that give us the best case scenario is about mm -hmm. a year from now, we're back to normal. Well, what happens if they're missing there, right? Which has to be right. factored in as a trader. You should be factoring mm -hmm. in all possibilities and assigning them a probability. Um, and I just mm -hmm. see at least the possibility that it's a little bit harder to get under control. And then if it is a little right. harder to get under control, maybe that forces the Fed's hand a little bit faster, which could freak out the market to some degree. Um, sure. But but we're going to find out, man, over the next three or six months right. because Chairman Powell, when we were on vacation a couple of weeks ago, I think I told mm -hmm. you on our last, when we chatted last week, I said I chat right. with my dad. He tells me what Chairman Powell just said. I said, whoa, that's a pretty strong statement, man. Time to retire the term transitory. He was the biggest cheerleader of that term, I think, overall. Um, right. And so we come to the first meeting where he's going to, you know, where that is his mindset. Because the last time he had a meeting in a press conference, he was still technically a believer in the word transitory, at least when he was putting it out. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So we got about a minute and a half, Teddy. Um, what other currencies are you looking at? It's been a pretty tame week. That's why, you know, in terms of chopping mm -hmm. around, maybe waiting for these big, because we have an ECB decision and a Bank of England decision coming up tomorrow, right. correct? And, that's, and that's, the, that's what's been going on for the past week and a half, is that you've seen that, that, I mean, if you look at the U.S. dollar Swiss, I mean, talk about Swiss cheese, you know. I mean, that's just a very narrow range trade i mean the range traders have yes. been definitely cleaning up the past like week and a half in the euro the pound yeah. and the swiss you know so i expect yeah. you're going to see a breakout after today um but okay. i would be very leery of what happens off of the initial release you know like i said the algos are going to like it wouldn't be it would not surprise me to see like for instance the british pound spike low to an all new lo new move low today and then still settle higher on the day you know what I mean? Like that kind of move or okay. even rally make new highs and then all of a sudden tank and actually make new lows on the day. You know what I mean? Okay. So until we have a verification going into tomorrow, I would say for the FX market, if you're not in a position working it, stay out because it's just you're not going to be able to compete with the machines if we actually have volatility. Now, if we have a dead number, you know, which I don't know exactly how that would occur. I think we're going to see some action no matter what, you know, especially with, I think, the U.S. dollar um, yen and also the U.S. dollar Canada. If the other ones don't move off the number, those will probably continue their trend. Those might and those might actually be the ones where you see an accelerated movement today, because you've got to think that a lot of traders are planning on the fact that we're going to have volatility. Okay, we got to run, man. I, appre I appreciate the update. We'll talk to you one more time before Christmas next week, man. All right. Thanks, Teddy. Take care. We'll be right back, folks.